That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. There are those who believe that behind the scenes of one of America's greatest and most celebrated endeavors lies a treasure trove of secrets. When you talk about space, you can get into the top secret very, very quickly. With all secret, highly classified programs, there's a very small group of people in the know. There were two initiatives of the early space program, one peaceful and one warlike. For more than half a century, the United States space program has accomplished feats beyond our wildest imaginations. We've sent men to the moon, placed a rover on Mars, and launched a probe that's still orbiting Jupiter. But while these are some of the best known achievements, is there another more secret agenda? Perhaps the answers to these questions are ready to be revealed in America's book of secrets. Chantilly, Virginia, summer 1990. Construction workers break ground on a sprawling yet unidentified facility 25 miles west of Washington, D.C. After journalists question the purpose of the new complex, the government abruptly and reluctantly admits to the existence of a decades-long secret organization, the National Reconnaissance Office. Most of the planning and secret space missions happen in the National Reconnaissance Office, which was established in 1961, but actually wasn't declassified until 1992. So there were a period of decades where the Pentagon would not even name this office or acknowledge that it existed. The NRO was one of the most closely guarded secrets of the Cold War until they decided to build a huge headquarters campus in Chantilly, Virginia in 1992. And people started wondering, well, what is this? And this whole history of what they had done in the Cold War started coming out very slowly after that. On February 22nd, 1995, President Bill Clinton declassified one of the NRO's most clandestine Cold War spy operations that had first been launched in the 1950s the Corona Satellite Program. On my mark, three, two, one, mark. The top secret Corona project was a direct response to the launch of Sputnik. There was a recognition that satellites were the future. It was simply too risky to fly reconnaissance aircraft over certain locations. Corona was our first imagery satellite. It was very primitive. You have to remember we didn't have digital communications at the time. So it was one thing to have something in orbit that was taking pictures. Well, how do you get the pictures down to the Earth where we can actually see them? And they, the solution they came up with was they ejected the film capsule in a container that could survive re-entry, parachute opens. The C-130 comes along with a hook out the front to snag it as it's descending in this parachute. And then if it was over the ocean, a ship would be nearby to grab the capsule before it sank. But that was the only way to do it back then. The public got to know Corona a little bit through its cover story, which was that they were weather satellites launched on behalf of or in conjunction with NASA. No one's going to question the need for weather satellites, so why would they think there's something else? But really, there's a whole lot of something else. There's been a long series of declassified files, starting with the Corona satellites. The information that tends to be the most closely guarded secrets in the U.S. government are the sources and means of how the intelligence community gets their information. Those facts are considered to be the most uh, treasured secrets. 